Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you guys how to get your chart set up for Smart Money Concepts, specifically the one by Lux Algo. That seems to be the best free version on the market. As always, I'm going to walk you through step by step by step everything you need to know to get this set up. If you guys are looking for a very long tutorial about each and every little thing that this indicator can do, what I'd recommend you guys do is go over here to YouTube and type in Smart Money Concepts Lux Algo on the search bar. You're going to see my pretty head right here, and this is a full 33 minute guide this guy that i'm giving you right now is not going to be anywhere that uh, long it's just going to give you the chart setup you guys need to actually make consistent profits so first things first i want you guys to go over here and i want you guys to open up a new layout after you open up a new layout i want you guys to go back over here and i want you to rename this i'm going to name this smart money test all right give it a test drive see how i like it hit save Next up, I'm gonna get rid of the volume. I normally don't like to have volume on my charts. It's just me. I don't like the way it looks, so I keep it off. If you guys like having volume, by all means, keep it on there, all right? Next up, we're gonna go over here to indicators, metrics, and strategies, and we're gonna type in smart money. It should be right up here towards the top under community scripts. It'll say smart money concepts, Luxalgo by Luxalgo, has about 33, 34,000 likes at the time uh, you know, I'm making this video. I want you guys to click on it once and it's going to open up a bunch of stuff on your screen. First things first, on top of this, we are going to have to change the sizes of what's going on. I just want to remind you guys that I usually record these videos about 150% zoomed in or 175. So when I go back to 100, you can see how tiny everything is. Now I'm okay with this usually, but I don't think you guys are going to be. So I'm going to go back up here to 150 so you guys can see what I'm doing. We're going to go over here to settings and these are all the settings you guys need to know before we start working on the strategy component where we put everything together. Mode, keep at historical. Style, keep at colored. Colored candles, I want you to keep this on. If you guys are beginner traders and investors, this is just gonna help you guys out so much more. Bullish structure all, bearish structure all. Confluence filter, I want you to turn this on. Internal label size, it's normal. Swing structure, all, all. Swing label size, normal. Show swing points, leave this off. Show strong, weak, high, low. This one's optional, but I would keep it on if you guys are new investors. If you guys can see that there's a level of support naturally, you guys don't have to worry about this one. Next up, we have order blocks. I'm going to make this go down to three, and I want you guys to check on the swing order blocks, and I want you guys to put this over at two as well. Sorry, I meant two and two. Order block filter, ATR, that's average true range. I want you to keep it there. You can test that cumulative mean range if you want to, but preferably I'd recommend ATR. Afterwards, you're going to change the colors of these order blocks if you want. I don't feel the need. Blue is support. Red is resistance. I, I'm okay with that. Next step, we have equal high low. This one you can keep on if you're more of a newer investor. If you guys are not new investors, you guys will know what they are already and you don't need the help. You're not going to see too many of them on here actually, so they don't really come up too much. Equal high low right there. Equal high low. Equal high low. You don't see them too often, okay? I'm going to check this on for now. Keep it on. Fair value gaps, leave it off. You don't have to worry about it right now. It really clears up the charts if you use it. Auto threshold, don't worry about it because it's still part of the fair value gaps. Keep going down. And the next one up here, you're going to have high lows MTF. Basically, these are just lines that represent the daily high, the daily low, the weekly high, the weekly um, high and low, excuse me, and the same with the monthlies, okay? I want you guys to keep the dailies on and the weeklies on. And if I move back over here, You'll see it'll say PDL, PD high, uh, PDH. So daily low, daily high, weekly high, weekly low. We're already breaking through the weekly high at this point. Right? And those are levels of resistance usually. Now, after you get all that done, we're going to keep on moving back down. You're going to see premium discount zones. This is the last thing. I want you guys to check this on. And it'll open up a discount zone down here and a premium zone up here and an equilibrium. After this, you're done with setting up the Smart Money Concepts Indicator. Here's what you guys have to do next, and this is the way I'd recommend doing it for now. Open up this little button right here, which allows you to have more windows. I pay for the premium plan, so I get up to eight windows here. I'm gonna maximize this at eight. And everything I just did has been copied by eight, which makes it really nice. I know it looks cluttered, but I am zoomed in at 150%. Now it looks a little bit easier. So what you guys are going to do 
is make individual trading strategies for each one of these. The one that I found that works the best for me, I'm gonna give that to you guys right now. And then if you guys watch any of my other content, you guys can add those different strategies pretty much on any one of those other layouts. Some of you guys may only have four available to you. Maybe some of you guys only have six. Maybe some of you guys only have two. Maybe you only have one, depending on if you get the free version. So whatever one you wanna choose, you can kind of say, hey, Michael gave me this great strategy. I'll implement it on this one and I'll see how it works and I'll show you guys the first strategy here. So we're gonna be adding two oscillators onto our charts. The first one is going to be a MACD and the second one is gonna be the stochastic indicator. And you know, let me zoom in back here again because I don't even think you guys can see those words, but basically MACD and stochastic, very simple things. Stochastic, and then of course the MACD. Now, when it comes to the MACD, you wanna make sure the settings are 12, 26, nine. Those are your default settings. You should not have to change them at all. The one thing that I have mine set as a default though, is I make all of my lines naturally thicker. Uh, you can see right here, it's set to the largest thickness, oh, behind my head right here, largest thickness. I like to have it like that because again, when I'm zoomed out, to normal zoom, so to speak. Uh, the lines are just a little bit easier for me to see. For the stochastic, I want you guys to enter in, instead of 14, one, three, I like to do 21, five, and five. Now, the one interesting thing that's always been kind of annoying to me with this particular indicator, and it's nothing crazy bad. You see how, if you guys remember, when we actually did the settings for this one, I clicked on color candles. Well, for whatever reason, if you click anywhere that's not the chart, it'll turn it off. But if you click on the indicator right up here again, you'll see how it goes on. And you can see how just by following the bullish signals, because overall, if you zoom out, Bitcoin's in this bullish trend, you wanna follow the bullish signals only in a bullish trend. You don't really have to care too much about the bearish signals usually. So you can see that green one was a buy. This one right here did not work. This one right here worked a little bit, but not as much as you would expect. What these two oscillators do right here is they give you, hey, we're gonna match it up with this. And if this is telling us to buy, and this is telling us to buy, and this is telling us to buy, then we finally buy. It really stops you from making those bad mistakes where, you know, think of investing as you make 500 bucks, you lose 100 bucks. You make another 500 bucks, you lose 100 bucks. This really makes it so you make 500 bucks, you only lose 20 bucks. You make 500 bucks, you only lose 20 bucks. It really slows down the amount of money you're losing, which means that your overall pot, your investment will continue to grow at a faster rate than other individuals. So basically the strategy is this. When you have the MACD go from negative to positive and you have the stochastic going from negative to positive, usually in oversold territory, that's when you guys are gonna be looking to do buys. So in this example here, the last buying opportunity that I see was stochastic indicator being oversold. So that'd be right here. The MACD didn't go positive until right here. And then we had the change of character right here. So all three things are telling you to buy at that point. That's when you want to buy. Now, it did take a while before it ended up working out. But again, as a swing trader or even a day trader, it's not going to go straight up as soon as you buy. In this example, it took about a, you know half a day or something before it started to jolt up. Now, I just hopped onto the 15 minute chart here. And basically, we're going to be using this as a day trading tool now instead of just a swing trading. So you see a uh, crossover here, MACD going on over right here. Open this up. And you see the change of character. This is about a couple hours of trading, but the couple hours it went up, you can make your day trade, you'll be perfectly fine. Now, naturally, we're waiting for another oversold, oversold crossover, MACD turned green here. You can start buying there if you want to. The change of character happened a while ago, and that's why I'm saying, hey, it's already green. For whatever reason, it's still kind of busted, but if the chart is green in itself, you have the buy signal here, buy signal here, you're good to go. Now, on the other side though, you may see a sell signal here, um, the sell signal wasn't really telling you to sell all too much here, unfortunately, but sometimes if you want to, you can go against the grain and try to follow just the MACD and the stochastic. The main reason I don't recommend this in some circumstances is just because you have to always zoom out when you're using these type of strategies. And the goal is to say, hey, Bitcoin is an uptrend here, uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. So I wanna make sure whenever I'm doing trades here, day trades or smaller swing trades, they should all follow that overall trend because 
let's say you buy at the wrong time or something like that, overall, it's gonna continue going up because that's the trend. If you go against the trend, you're more likely to lose money unless you can catch the very top when you're getting the reversal. And catching the top is very, very difficult. Tell anybody that's been trading Bitcoin over the last few weeks and they say, oh, this is the top. Oh no, we broke through that. Oh, this is the new top. Oh, we broke through that. This is the new top. Oh my God. And it just keeps on going up and up. They end up losing all the money in their accounts. So. That's the strategy number one. For the rest of the strategies here, take your time, watch my videos, other YouTubers' videos, see what strategies work the best for you. I just wanna let you guys know that this video was sponsored by Fairdesk. If you guys are looking for a place to try out these new techniques that I'm giving you guys, this is gonna be the place that I recommend. Thanks and have a wonderful rest of your day.